Good morning, guys. How are you? Um, welcome to Tiny Kitchen, Big Flavor. I wanted to drop in real quick to show you um, how I prepare my beans. Um, I have here a packet of dry beans, which I'm going to open. Make sure I take out the bad bits. Sometimes they have like little pieces of rocks and whatnot. You remove those. I'm going to rinse it really, really well. And then I'm going to place them in water overnight. This helps release the lictins in the beans, which are so harmful for people that have autoimmune disorders. Um, this kind of eliminates a lot of it, and it is the best way to prepare these. Now, with that being said, there's something to be said about um, back in the days. I remember as a child, my mom, she would soak them the night before in water and once um the following day she would rinse that water out at six o'clock in the morning she would put them on on the not stove because we had a nafe where i'm from um and they would cook for about three four hours um before she made them and we didn't and we have gotten so caught up in the fast lane these days that we forget that step that your beans, any kind of beans, you should always um, soak them the night before in water, then rinse that water and start with clean water because the grain or the bean itself will sprout, will um, hydrate, and it's in really the skin of the bean that lictin um, actually live. And from what I've read, now please don't message me um, saying, oh, this is not right, whatever. I'm just saying what I have read. Um, they say that um, these grains have this because it's a, a defense mechanism so that the bugs and whatever won't eat them. Now, I don't know how true that is or not, but in any case, I'm just sharing. So let me get to getting these ready. Okay, so I have taken out all the bad bits. Now I'm just going to rinse them out real, you know, a couple of times before I actually put water to soak them. But I want to show you something real quick so you can see. Hopefully you can see it. This is just, I'm just rinsing them out a little bit, but check out the water. I don't know if you can see how dark it is. See that? It's just dirty. Dirty, 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 and dirty. So you're gonna rinse them out a couple of times before you put the water to soak, to soak the beans, okay? All right, so here it is. Now I'm just gonna cover them, leave them on top of the stove overnight, and tomorrow I will show you what it looks like, and then we will add clean water and start the cooking process. Doing this also helps the length of time you cook them because the bean will hydrate and expand and make it a lot, it'll, it'll cook quicker than if you didn't do this step. And it's crucial that you do do this step. This is the actual, the correct way of cooking beans. Or well, that's how I grew up, cooking beans. Okie dokie, see you tomorrow. Good morning, good morning everyone. Just wanted to show you what it looks like after the beans have been soaking in water overnight. Actually, more than overnight because it was yesterday in the early hours that I did this. But you see, they're plump. Oh, look at the water. It's milky. So I'm going to rinse it out and then I'm going to start cooking them. And I'll bring you back in a minute. Hey, guys. So I just wanted to take this opportunity also to mention that sometimes you'll have a bag of dry beans and although you put them to soak and you go through all of that, some of the beans will not tenderize and some will tenderize really fast. And that normally happens when you get a hold of a bag where they have mixed some um, old beans with newer beans and that does happen. I hate when that happens because it almost feels like some of the beans are not cooked all the way and some are. So I just wanted you to, you know, to be aware of that. 
So what I'm going to do now, I rinsed it about half a dozen times and I had this sorry, ham with a bone in it and I'm going to put it in and then I'm just going to add some water and go ahead and get it going. Put it on the stove. I don't know if you can tell how much water I put in, but I put in quite a bit of water. I'm going to put it on the stove. Hey guys, so you see it's boiling already. I'm going to set my heat to medium high and let it just see that. That's all I'm going to do. Hey guys, so we are back. It's been half an hour that it has been boiling on medium. And look at the beans. They are starting to get tender. I have not added any more water, but I will add a little bit right now. About a cup. I'm going to add about a cup and a half of water and continue to let it cook down. So I added a cup and a half of water. Now I'm going to let it continue boiling. Bring it back in a little Okay, bit. guys. So it's been exactly almost 45 minutes that I put the beans on and they are tender right now. So I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to take out the ham and um, cut it up. And then I'm going to show you how I season them. And I'm just going to go ahead and make uh, what we call habichuela guisa, which is what my mom used to make. And I'm going to show you how she used to make them. Um, so I decided not to make sancocho, the habichuela. Not feeling it today, but um, I am going to show you how I season these and how mom used to do it. Bring you back in a little bit. So I'm bringing you back in so I can show you what I have done and what I'm getting ready to do. And the way my mom used to season the um, habichuela, the beans. Let me close this door because they're working on the roof and you're going to hear a lot of noise. So hold on. All right, so we're back. So I wanted to show you what I have here. I don't know, can you see that well? Here are my beans. I'm going to put them over here so that you can see better. And then here I have my sofrito. I have some anise seeds. These are very good if you have problem with digestion um, with beans. You add a little bit of this. I have some salt. I have a little bit of bihol. And this is to give it color because normally back home they add tomato paste but I don't like the tomato paste, so I'm gonna add this. I have already chopped the ham that I had initially put the beans to boil with. And then this here is chopped up kabacha squash. Do not use another kind of squash or it's gonna be sweet. So let me just show you real quick. The kabacha squash, I cut it. I should have let you see the whole thing. But anyway, this is kabacha squash and it is the closest to what we call back home aoyama which is a squash as well but it's not sweet don't use um what is it called butternut squash because then it's your beans will be sweet you don't want that so this is the way mom used to make it she would also add some if she had it she would add some platano to it Plantain. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add this to it and that's about it. I'm going to get it going. What I'm going to do first back here is I'm going to saute, which what we call sofrei, the sofrito in the little pan behind there. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to add this stuff to it just like that. Where's my little... I'm just going to add it. Oh, gosh. Good Lord. Okay, I'm just going to add it in here. Just like so. It's going to continue cooking. And I cut it small pieces so that the squash can be done quickly. So it doesn't take too long. I may have to add a little bit more water to this. Um, haven't decided yet. And then you're just going to add salt to taste. So I'm going to get my sofritos to start um, kind of stir frying it a little bit, uh, sautéing it a little bit actually. 
I had done this video and boy did I get a lot of uh, messages correcting me because I said a word wrong. I was like, good Lord, I didn't know people have so much time in their hands to pick on the tiniest little thing. But anyway, so here we go. I'm just going to saute it. I'll bring you back in a minute when I finish saute it so I can show you what it looks like. This is how much anise I'm going to add to it. You don't have to add to it if you don't like the flavor of that, of it. I do, and I grew up my mom adding it, so that's why I'm doing it. So in it goes. See how it's sauteing this already? I'm going to let it kind of cook a little bit more. What we call sofrito, sofreino. So that's what I'm doing. Oh my God, the aroma in this kitchen. Oh my goodness. So initially I was gonna make un sancocho de habichuela, but then I changed my mind because I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling up to it today. And, but I am going to make the pork that I seasoned yesterday and there'll be a video on it uh, later on. I'm gonna be making this to go with it and I'm going to be making some white rice to go with it. So you see how it's sizzling, bubbling here? At this point, it's when you add, you add this to your beans, like that. See that? Just like that. And then you take some of the dripping so you can get everything out, like so. I am gonna add a little bit more water because I'm gonna need it. I'm just gonna take water in my, fry, in my pan and put it in there like so, like that. I'm gonna add salt to taste. It's up to you how much or how little. Ooh, I don't have any salt in I need another one. I am gonna add this for color. And then all I'm gonna do is let it simmer until the, um, the squash is nice and tender and that's all I'm not gonna add too much to it I might add a little bit more of the coloring not sure yet let me get some salt salt where are you my salt are you where is my salt okay I'm gonna add this salt not a lot because it's so coarse don't want to end up salting it so Just a little bit like that. If I need any more, I'll add later. It's better for you to need salt than have too much and then your meal is ruined. But if by chance that happens to you, you're making beans or a soup or anything and you've put too much salt, add some potatoes in there. You can, add, you can half the potatoes. The potato will absorb it. Um, and that's a way to kind of remedy, assuming that you didn't just add a whole bunch of salt to it because then no amount of potato is gonna help you. But anyway, let me add a little bit more of this. And I'll bring you back when it's done so I can show you. Hey guys, so my beans are done. I want to uh, mention that the sofrito, essentially what it has is garlic, bell peppers, cilantro, um, onions, and that's basically it. And you kind of blend it all up, a little bit of vinegar. I do vinegar in mine. And that's really what's in the, initially, in the sofrito, in case you, you were wondering. The only difference is that we put it in the blender. Um, but I wanted to add a little bit of more cilantro to my beans. And I normally, when I get a cilantro and I get really good one, I rinse it out real good. I put it to the blender and I make cubes out of it. And then this way I have them already. So that's it right there, what you see. So if I can't find cilantro, fresh cilantro, cilantro, then I have my own already. But these beans are amazing. I just tasted it and it's really, really, really good. All I'm going to do now is turn it off, let that dissolve in there, and I'll bring you back 
to show you when I when I put it in the plate so you can see what it looks like. But that's basically it. These are absolutely delicious, you guys. Delicious. You don't have to add the um, squash to it. The kabucha. Look at kombucha. I didn't mean to say kombucha. The kabacha squash. You can make the beans without it. Just do sofrito. And that's it. You don't have to put the, the squash if you don't like it. You can just make it like this. You don't even have to put the ham. You can do bacon bits and it will be just as good. Or you can leave out the meat altogether and just season it well with the sofrito like I did. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the um, notification button so it'll let you know when I post a new video. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye.